Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments, and in this video, I want to talk about getting the first and last working days of the month. But with a little spice, I had put out a similar video where I talked about the first and last calendar days of the month. But in this one, we'll be talking about the working days. And of course, we are talking about work days in Excel. You should think about it as a workday function, the workday international function, network days, network days international. But in this case, we're just going to be using either the Workday or the Workday International function. I like the Workday International function more because of the flexibility with the weekend argument. Even though that's not going to be used in this video, but I will stick with, you know, the Workday International. Either way. So let's get into it. I'll explain the logic first and then I'll write the formula. So I want to get the first working day of the month. Now, this is the reference, right? So if I select this date, it means I'm interested in the first working day of July 2023. So what do I do? Basically, I get the last day of the previous month, which in this case will be 30th of June. That's the last calendar day. And I find one working day after that because that's the last calendar day of June. One working day after that will obviously have to be in July. It can't be in June. Again. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use, well... You know, workday int function. And then for my start date, rather than just picking this as my start date, I'm going to use the EO month because I want to get the end of month, but for the previous month. So this is going to be my reference and I'm going to use minus one. This says, you know, take me back by one month. So since I'm in July, it's going to take me to the end of June. Okay. So that's my start date. And I need one working day after that. Right. So that's basically what it is. One working day after that. And I press enter. Okay, and it tells me 3rd of July. I would think it's correct because if it was wrong, it probably will return maybe 1st of July. So let's see. I have a calendar here. All right. Okay. And then July. Yeah, July 3rd is a Monday. 1st and 2nd are weekends. So I think that makes sense. Good. So let's get to the next one, which is the last working day of the current month. So what I will do in this case is to get the first calendar day of the next month so in this case it means i'm going to get august first and then i'm going to find one working day before that of course since august first is my start date one working day before that cannot be in august it's obviously going to be the last working day of july okay so that's the logic there so what we are going to do is the same thing we are going to do you know like the workday int function here right and then for our start date we do eo month and we are going to move this to the end of the current month. This is going to take us to 31st of July. But we are interested in the first day of the next month. So we do a plus one. Okay. So this way, we are going to be in 1st of August. That's where we are right now. And once I get that as my reference, I can now find one working day before that, which brings me to the last working day of July. So because I'm coming backwards for the days in the Workday International, I do minus one. So that's what it means. So it's like one working day before this reference. Okay, close the bracket. All right. And we have our answer. So 31st of July is obviously, you know, the last working day of the month. So next thing I want to do, and anyone who's watched the previous video already knows where I'm going with this, is to do this in one cell and have it spill. Like I described in the previous video, what you may want to do in the simple case, because you already have these answers here, is to use H stack, you know, which is horizontally stacking these two together. I could just point to the answers in this case, you know, more or less like this, and it gives me both. But of course, if, we were, if I were to do it in a formula context, it means that I would actually do H stack. Then for the first argument, rather than C5, I would use this formula expression. For the next one, I will use, you know, this formula expression. But I can see that there is a pattern, you know, to the formula constructs for the two of them. If you look at it, you can see that, yes, yes, EO months, you know, there's C3, okay. Maybe here is minus one, here is zero. Outside of the brackets, there's nothing here like a plus zero. Here is plus one. And then we can see one and minus one. The point I'm trying to make is that we can write it with one function taking advantage of, as I love to call them, array literals, some people call them array constants, and we'll be able to get this to work, you know, in one cell. So let's go ahead and do it. So we do work the international, just look at the expressions over there. We start up with an EO month, right? And then our reference is obviously C3. 
For the first one here, we have a minus one. For the next one, we have a zero. So I can open up curly braces, you know, for my array literals, and I'll do minus one and zero. So I'm basically just taking both at once, okay? So minus one will be for the first working day, zero will be for the last working day. I close the bracket, and then I do a plus. You can see here, there's nothing being added to the EO month. So if I were to use my array literals again, it's going to be zero. And here we have a plus one. So it means one is going to be added, right? Okay, good. So now that we have done that, that ends the start date argument. And when we put a comma and we go into the number of days. In the case of the first working day, we need one day, you know, advancing. Whereas for the last working day, we need one day, you know, before. So we open again, you know, curly braces and we do one and minus one. Close and then close this. Good. And now you can see that we have both in one cell and it spills into both. Excellent. All right, I'll take a break at this point. So I appreciate all those who have subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much for the support. I definitely do not take it for granted. And also to appreciate those who I know will subscribe after now. Please, when you do subscribe, do turn on the notification bell icon so that when I release a video, You'll be the first to know. So let's get back into Excel. What I want to do now is extend this idea to a 12-month period. What I've done in the previous, you know, part of this video is just to get, you know, the first and work, last working days for a reference date. But in this case, I want to do it for a 12-month window, meaning start from, you know, July, August, September, run all the way to June. So this formula expression as I have it, you know, pretty much, would kick it off. The only thing I would do is to introduce, you know, a sequence function, right? You know, a sequence function gives you a sequence, of course. <laughs> so if I say sequence of 12, you know, that just gives me, yeah, that's just some format in there. Okay. So 1 to 12. I can decide to start this at what? 0, meaning I skip the next argument, skip, and then I do, you know, start of 0, right? And that gives me 0 to 11. And there's a reason why I'm doing this, and you will get to see. So what I'm going to do here is this. Just look at this expression. For the first month, it should be minus 1, right? For the next month, it would obviously be 0. It's going to keep incrementing by 1 that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add minus 1 to that expression of sequence 12 comma 0 right you know that this is going to give me what 0 to 11 okay so since this gives me 0 to 11 of course minus 1 plus 0 being the first you know um, element there is going to be minus 1 the next one will be 0 and so on this is really what i need so that's the only thing i've introduced in here to make this work let's see if that works okay so by doing that yeah it seems to work I think so, since I see a blend of one, two, and three, I'm thinking it's correct. So those are the first, you know, um, working days of the month. Let's do the same thing for like the last working day of the month. So a similar idea, right? So we bring this in here. Okay. Now the only thing we are going to do, yeah, I think we need to have our formatting in there. Um, we are going to use the same expression. The only thing you see here is that this one, of course, starts from zero, right? So for the first month, it is zero. The next month, it's one. The next month, is two. The next month, is three. So this is perfect. I can just use the same expression, which is what? Sequence, you know, 12, comma, comma, zero. Okay? That gives me, you know, the zero to 11 that I need. I don't need to add any number to it because the sequence is just perfect. And what do I need to do? Press enter. Okay? Let's just update the format in here. And this looks like, you know, this is fine. So now we've gotten a spilled array for the first days. We've gotten another spilled array for the last days, right? And we are talking about working days here. But what I want to do is to do it with one formula, just like I did, you know, here. Taking advantage of the pattern and taking advantage of array literals or array constants. So let's try and, you know, write this again, just Taking a look here, and you can see what's going on here. What do you see? You can see C3, right? And then outside of here, you see there's a minus 1. Of course, here there's a 0, yeah, because it's invisible. <laughs> then when you close the bracket, this guy has a plus 1. This one doesn't have. Then it ends with 1 and minus 1. So just follow the expression as you see it, and you'll be fine. Okay, so let me start. 
right? So I've done here EOMONTS, let's say C3. So the next thing is at the start there, you can see that there's a minus one here, and then this is zero here. So I'm going to use my array literals, which is going to be in curly braces. So this is going to be minus one comma zero. After that, I'm going to add it to what? Sequence of what? 12. Okay. So I'm just doing both together. I just decided to, you know, delete what I had just so we can kind of work it through together. So now that I have this, you know, I close the bracket again. So more or less, I'm at this point, right? The close of, after the sequence, the close of the EO month. Outside of that, you can see that I have a one here and here I have a zero. So I can use my array details again. This is going to be zero and this is going to be one, okay? Now I'm done here with the start date. The start date argument is done. Then we put a comma and we then go into the number of days. For the first one, which is first working days, you need a one. For this one, you need a minus one. So array the trial still. So we do one and we do minus one. Close the curly brackets, you know, and then close the brackets. Let's press enter. We have a spill error. Of course, you know why, because of this data here. So let's delete. Right, and now I think we have something that works. What we now have is one formula which spills not just you know down the rows but across the column. So we have one formula that gives us the first working days of all the months for a 12 month period and the last working days of those 12 months as well. This is excellent and it's really just taking advantage of, you know, the patterns, being able to recognize the pattern and then using array literals, which are very, very powerful. They help you sometimes to overcome the inability of some functions to spill into multi rows, multi columns. And that's what I decided to show in this video. If you like it, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel, Excel Moments. For now, 